Ubuntu server where to upgrade the latest version of Webmin. Now, for uh, convenience sake, I say always get the latest version from the website webmin.com. Then I tell it when to update. Now, the cool thing is you can actually tell Webmin to do a scheduled update. So just make sure that this checkbox is, text, is uh, ticked. Update from webmin.com. When to update. Uh, that time every 30 days, for example, and shoot me an email if you want to when you are done. So that is a very convenient way to keep your webmin up to date. Once that is done, we're going to take a look at all the other options that we can use. <laughs> The second set of modules on your Webmin system are your system modules. Now, these enable you to do a number of tasks related to your system, to your uh, Ubuntu server. One of these is the boot up and shutdown module, which enables you to actually start and stop all the services running on your Ubuntu server which is pretty cool. You can also tell uh, the computer to start certain services on boot or disable certain services on boot. If you want to reboot your system, you can do so here. If you want to shut down your entire system using a web-based interface, you can do so here. If you have a few users on your system and you want to change their passwords, you can do so very easily here. Just go for the change passwords option, click on the user that you want to give a new password, and enter their new password. You can even tell the user to uh, change their password at the next login. The disk and network file systems uh, module lets you connect other partitions or other file systems into your Ubuntu server. For example, if you want to connect to a network-based file system and you want to mount that file system into the directories of your Ubuntu server very easily and permanently, you can do so using this uh, module. But it's a little bit complicated because you can mount so many different file systems. We're going to get into that uh, on an other episode, perhaps. But I want to show you the file system backup function uh, on these uh, on the system modules. The file system backup function is a very nice easy way to back up certain directories on your Linux system locally or uh, off-site using a web-based interface. Very easy way to build backups. So what you do is click on the file system backup. You choose uh, the directory that you want to back up. For example, I'm going to back up my home directory on my Linux server. Remember, all of this that we're doing is all relative on the Linux server, nothing on the local system. So home nightwise, which is the home directory on my Linux server. I want to have the backup made in tar format, please. And I just click add new backup of directory. Now it says I'm going to back up to tar. I'm going to back up this directory. Where do you want it? I want it to a certain file or I want it to a remote uh, system. For example, you can back it up over SSH to another system. But in this case, I just want to back it up to another directory on my system. So I've created a new folder called Backup Test. And I'm going to give my destination file name. So backup.tar. This means that this directory will be backed up to this directory using this file name. So the home nightwise directory will be zipped into a tar file or tarred into a tar file called backup.tar in the backup test directory. Very easy. Now you have some options that you can give, but the coolest thing is the schedule. You can enable the backup to be automatically done. You can even get an email when it's finished. And I'm going to, uh, instead of setting the time and the date manually, I'm going to say, I just want to do this daily at midnight. Look at this. This is a cool option when the system boots. Also very interesting. But uh, daily at midnight. And I say, OK, I'm fine with that. Create and backup now. 
There we go. I do have a little error because it cannot access one certain file, but the rest of the directories have all been backed up to that tar file. Now, in order to take a look, we're going to go to that directory, cd backup tests ls, and there you have it, ls manel, then you see it. There you go. That is the entire file that was just created. Now, if I don't want to have that error that I just uh, I just gave you, I can just choose uh, to change this little backup. So, we go back to that scheduled backup. I'm going to just back up my documents files. Save and backup now. It's going to go through the whole shebang again, and it's complete. Now if we can take a look at the command line again. There we go. There is our little backup file. As you can see, all has been backed up and it's been done very easily. Now if I go back to the module, file system backup, you'll see that it will have saved the backup and it'll say it will say this is the directory to backup, this is the file system, this is where I'm going to put it, it's scheduled, when it's scheduled, and what it will have to do. So you can just add new backups of new directories here and use um, the file system backup function of Webmin to uh, completely automate the backups of your Linux system. The next category of modules is the servers module. Now, in this example, I haven't installed a lot of services uh, on the server, but if you have installed LAMP, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP on startup, you'll be able to control your Apache web server straight from here without ever having to use a configuration file and the command line. For example, I have installed the SSH server on uh, this computer. So if I click on SSH server, you will be uh, you'll be able to see that I can configure a myriad of options without ever having to edit the config file. Now, with the SSH, I'm taking this one as an example because it actually shows me what the config file looks like. So just imagine if you didn't have Webmin, you would be actually editing this file and putting options here and uh, putting away hashes and stuff like that, but instead you have a nice graphical way that tells you what to do and how to configure your certain service that you want to configure. In this case, SSH, for, for example, I can um, change the port number of my SSH, I can change the version, uh, I can uh, do all kinds of nice spiffy things using the server module of the uh, Webmin interface. And if you can figure, uh, if, if you have installed other services uh, before you install Webmin, you will be having all of these control panels to configure them right over here. Even if you don't have a full-blown Linux server installed, you can still install Webmin on your Linux workstation and connect it to the outside world, or locally if you want to as well, because it does offer you some other nice options. For example, if we go to the Others tab, we can go to the HTTP tunnel. Now, what will this do? This will actually create an HTTP tunnel between the system you are working on at the moment and your Ubuntu system. If you enter a URL right here, it will be pulled down from the internet using the Ubuntu system that is running Webmin, and the content will be pushed through the HTTPS connection to the laptop or the system that you're using to configure your Ubuntu system. So, for example, let's just say you have your uh, Ubuntu server at home, you have opened up Webmin to the internet, and you want to surf a certain site at work without anybody noticing it. Well, very easily. Connect to your Ubuntu server at home using Webmin, enter the URL that you want to visit, for example, yahoo.com, 
and just click Open. The website will be opened in the um, Webmin window and the traffic will be securely forwarded to the computer you are using at the moment. So you can just go ahead and surf for everything that you want without being noticed on, let's say, the company firewall. So I am really surfing the entire internet including all of the sites you aren't supposed to visit uh, when you're at work or something and nobody will be able to intercept my traffic. So if you connect with your laptop to a certain hotspot and you want to surf securely from home, you can do so using that little tunnel and that little functionality in your Webmin system. One of the other ones that is pretty cool is the system and server status. With the system and server status you can actually set up monitors to monitor systems and give you an email or a notification when those monitors are down. Several of these monitors have been entered but we're going to set one up just to show you how easy it is. So we're going to go to add monitor of type. Uh, let's see which system that we could monitor here. Let's see, you can take a look at your disk space. Um, yeah, we're going to take a look at our disk space. We're going to monitor our disk space. Add monitor of type. You can get a notification via email. You can tell it to run a certain command. You can, of course, uh, tell it which directory or which partition to monitor. So, in this case, I am monitoring the disk space on my root directory and I want the minimum free space to be, let's say, one gigabyte. So, if the disk space on my root partition threatens to run out and I only have one gigabyte left, I will be getting an email from my system when that happens. Create. And there you have it. And there are tons of systems that you can monitor. You can uh, check check out your uh, DHCP if it's running. You can check all uh, check out all of the important services on your uh, Ubuntu system and on your Ubuntu server automatically. So what uh, basically happens is that you can tell the Webmin uh, system to monitor your Ubuntu server and keep you in check when something is going wrong. So you can even, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know if you see this, monitor a remote HTTP service. Now, let's see if we can do that. Which means that I can monitor whether or not a website is online. So, I'm going to send myself an email when this website is not working. So whenever my uh, own website goes down, I will get an email from my Ubuntu system. So using this system and server status tab, you can use, uh, you can actually monitor not only your own Linux server, but also external hosts. Easy and just using point and click. And of course, upload and download, very cool. Let's say you are at work and you want your Ubuntu system at home to download something, you can do it from here. Remember the wget command that I just gave you? Well, you can do so here. For example, I'm going to show you how it's done in practice. I'm going to go back to the Webmin page. This can be any website where you can download just about any file. We're going to copy the link to another download file. I'm going to paste it here. There you go. Then I'm going to tell it where it has to download it. For example, my home directory, Nightwise, um, Documents. OK. And, uh, well, that's about it. Download URLs. As you can see, it's downloading the file directly to the directory.